Hello, this is Dr. Murray Barron. I'm a rheumatologist at McGill University in Montreal, Canada, and the director of the Canadian Scleroderma Research Group. This presentation is a brief summary of methods used to assess and measure digital ulcers and systemic sclerosis, mostly for the purposes of therapeutic trials for this condition. This represents the consensus of a meeting of 10 expert rheumatologists uh, that occurred in Montreal in January of 2012. First, what is in fact a digital ulcer? A digital ulcer is defined as an area with visually discernible depth and a loss of continuity of the epithelial surface, which can be denuded completely or covered by a scab or necrotic tissue. It's important to understand that if denudation is not clearly visible to the investigator, that loss of epithelialization, epidermis and dermis, must be determined by that investigator, him or herself. An example of a digital ulcer is seen in this photograph, in which it is clear that there is discernible depth uh, to this lesion. The lesion must have depth to be determined to be a, a, a digital ulcer. If there's a lesion at the fingertip, but it is not clear to the investigator that there is any depth present, then one should assume it is not an, a, a digital ulcer and therefore should not be included as one in the study. There are many lesions in which it is not easy to be certain that there is in fact depth present, such as this lesion where there is a crust over some type of lesion at the digital uh, tip. If you're not certain that this ulcer has depth to it, then you should call it not an ulcer. If, however, uh, you feel that despite the crust there is depth and it still could be determined to be an ulcer. Um, it would be up to the investigator to decide if he would like to remove some of the crust that's covering the ulcer uh, to determine if depth is present. However, if the ulcer, uh, if the crust is not removed and you're still not certain, then it should not be an, uh, concluded that this is an ulcer. So what else is not an ulcer? An ulcer over calcification should not be included as a digital ulcer in any therapeutic trial. If there's any doubt as to whether there's calcification present, that digit should be x-rayed to see if there is calcification directly under uh, the skin lesion. Fissures on a digit are not ulcers. This is a good example of a lesion in the skin which is a fissure and this should not be determined to be a digital ulcer. In this digit, there are multiple small little areas of scab, but it is quite clear that there is no depth present, so none of these areas should be determined to be an ulcer. If the entire distal finger is involved by a lesion, the consensus of the group was that this should not be considered a digital ulcer. Uh, these are often the uh, a prelude to the development of gangrene at the fingertip which is also not an, ulcerated, an ulcerative lesion. And this is an example where there's clear gangrene under the nail. This whole lesion, somewhat proximal to that, which encircles the finger, should not be considered a digital ulcer for the purposes of any therapeutic trial. Once you determine that the ulcer is active, or, uh, pardon me, once you determine that there is an ulcer present, then it must be determined whether the ulcer is active, whether it is healed, or whether you just cannot tell, and we will call that an indeterminate ulcer. So first, any lesion must be determined to be an ulcer, uh, obviously, but then you must be able to see the de-epithelialized de base as you can in this uh, ulcer here, and if you can, that ulcer is then determined to be an active ulcer. Once again, you must be able to see that base to determine if you have an active ulcer present or not. This is a little bit more difficult because this is a photograph and not an actual patient. But this area here is probably an active ulcer because we are looking at the uh, deepithelialized base. Even though this ulcer may be closing in, it may have been a larger one before, if you feel that you can see the deepithelialized base, you should determine this to still be an active ulcer. This is another example of a small but probably active ulcer. Once again, it may be difficult to tell from the, tell from the photograph, but uh, in real life, if you feel that this little area here, where the, this is scab here, but this little area here is in fact an ulcer base, uh, 
then you can determine that this is a, an active ulcer. Indeterminate ulcers, pardon me, indeterminate ulcers are definite ulcers but are covered with crust. And this is an example where it's quite clear that there's depth to this lesion, but you cannot really see the, uh, the base of the ulcer because of all this crust. If you can't see the base and you cannot determine whether the base is a de-epithelialized de base, then you should call this an indeterminate ulcer. Uh, it is up to you once again, if you wish to lift the crust off, to see if you can see a base underneath uh, to do so, and then determine if in fact it is active or not. If you do not lift the crust off, you cannot to see the ulcer base, you cannot determine if this is active, you must call this an indeterminate ulcer. This is another example of a, a definite ulcer. This lesion is definitely an ulcer, but one cannot see the base because of this crust over it. So this should be called an indeterminate ulcer. Healed ulcers uh, are either areas where you have been following a patient longitudinally and you previous saw an ulcer that has now disappeared. That area would be called a healed ulcer. Or you can actually detect where an ulcer may have been, such as in this finger here, but now there is really only fibrous or scar tissue, and this would be called a healed ulcer. This is another area where there's a bit of shine from the photograph and the flash, but you can see that there is a lesion here that looks like a typical ulcer. Uh, there now is, however, there is no depth any longer and is covered by fibrous tissue. This would be a healed ulcer. Let's move on to measuring ulcers. Uh, this is usually done with digital calipers similar to the one in this photograph. Um, these calipers have uh, two points down here which you would use to measure the distance between the two sides of the ulcer and these these uh, two parts of the caliper are moved together by this uh, control arm here and there's a digital readout usually in millimeters and this particular one to two decimal places. Uh, these calipers should be set to zero, they should be closed, and the number up here should be set to reset to zero, and there's usually a button somewhere on the caliper which allows you to do that. And then the calipers are open to measure the ulcer width. So before you do anything, you first reset these calipers to zero. Uh, any ulcer is measured now in two planes in order to calculate an area. And we assume now that ulcers are an ellipse for the purpose of the calculation. Look for the long axis of the, sorry, look for the long axis of the, of the ulcer, measure that, find the midpoint of the long axis, and measure the perpendicular axis. Measure each length three times and use the mean of the measurements. Always reset to zero between each measurement. Do not look at the readout while making the measurements, and that is actually not that difficult to do. Um, importantly, you have to decide on where to make the measurement. What we want to do is measure the active surface area of the ulcer. If the ulcer is indeterminate but is a follow-up of an active ulcer, in most studies it will still be counted as an active ulcer until it has healed and thus has to be measured. So this is an example of an indeterminate ulcer where there is an ulcer with depth but covered with crust. You measure from one end of the crust surface to the other and then a perpendicular to that uh, at the midpoint of the first measurement and measure that. And those two measurements should be recorded. Each of these measurements should be performed three times. One time, two times, three times, and then one, two, three. Record each of those measurements and in the end it will be the average of the measurements that will be used. Here's a, more a couple of more complicated ulcers. This one is fairly straightforward. Uh, the arrow is not quite in the right place, but you would measure from this point to this point for the long axis and then perpendicular to that across the ulcer, no matter what the ulcer looks like. Similarly here, even though this is an irregular ulcer, we agreed that you would measure the long axis from there to there, and then the midpoint, perpendicular to that midpoint, across that midpoint, from there to there. And in the end, an ellipse would be calculated from these measurements, which you can see is not perfect in terms of the actual total ulcer, but is the easiest way to make this measurement. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Arian Herrick, of Manchester for supplying some of these photos. I would like to thank all the physicians that participated in the project in 2002 that led, 2012 that led to this set of classifications for digital ulcers in scleroderma. And I'll, I would also like to thank the Scleroderma Society of Ontario
for their generous support for the uh, exercise that was held in Montreal in 2002. Thank you very much for your attendance.